nanoscale weather machines, some barely visible to the human eye. Keeping track of troops in Iraq, the military is already using uh, some type of GPS on some soldiers, but what more can be done? CNN's Brian Todd takes a look in this week's Tech Effect. A relentless search for two missing American soldiers in Iraq. Could tracking devices placed on their bodies have helped to find them faster? That kind of technology does exist. Obviously, it's not uh, down to find microchips uh, at this point, but it does exist and is used uh, in this theater uh, by uh, certain forces when they're conducting the specialized type missions. Even without definitive proof, cloud seeding continues to be practiced in over 34 countries worldwide. But silver iodide and dry ice nuclei are Stone Age technologies compared to today's higher tech particle payloads. The most amazing of these belong to a family of weather mod devices that are so small you might not see one even if it was floating in your eye. Ranging from the ultra tiny to the nearly invisible, these are the revolutionary micro machines that will be the workhorses of any world weather control system. They're MEMS, micro electromechanical sensors. There are approximately 2,000 weather balloons launched globally worldwide every day. Those balloons play a huge role in helping us predict and potentially control our weather. But what if we could launch 10,000 weather balloons a day, or 10 million? That's exactly the theory behind GEMS. GEMS are global environmental MEMS sensors, a concept that we have come up with that deals with a massive wireless network of airborne probes. The idea is to release 10,000 or more of these dust-sized probes every day from airplanes, stratospheric platforms, or satellites. Like weather balloons, the probes would monitor weather information over every kilometer of the Earth's surface at a resolution that is today unheard of. We envision that the GEMS probe itself would have a bio-inspired design, something like a maple seed or a dandelion seed that actually incorporates the constructs of nature to achieve aerodynamics and buoyancy. With an ongoing stream of millions of measurements, the accuracy of our picture of the atmosphere could improve 1,000 times over. There's every reason to be optimistic that simply having more measurements of the atmosphere will lead to improved forecasts. It's also possible that the gems themselves could be made to play an active role in cloud dynamics. In effect, cloud seeding with a million microscopic computers. We could potentially use these very small devices either as cloud condensation nuclei to seed clouds the way that current weather modification is done. Or potentially something even more futuristic would be to actually have the devices be active where they could introduce some perturbation into parts of the atmosphere to actually modify the weather. But if gems are heavier than air, what will happen when these millions of probes finally fall to Earth? When the gems probes land on the surface, either in the water or on the land, they would continue potentially to provide surface observations. But what about the ones that end up on your picnic table or in your hair? At the sizes we're talking about, if you actually inhaled one or got one in your mouth or one in your eye, it would probably be no different than, say, a speck of dust or a, a particular particle in the atmosphere that you would get in. You'd probably sneeze it out or cough it up. Useful as nanotechnology will be to weather observation and prediction, there's no question that it will also play a significant role in military weather operations. But in the future, every square inch of every city will be alive with intelligence. Because every street and every building will have a network of microcomputers built right into them. Dr. Chris Peaster calls it smart dust. A smart dust particle or moat is a wireless sensor with sensing, computation, communication and power in one package. These all-in-one microcomputers will be small, very small. The size of a moat today is about the size of a grain of rice. And we've shown that we can make the circuitry small enough and light enough that eventually it will be possible to make things that are on a sub-millimeter size scale. 
tiny specks of computer smart dust will form a vast invisible network that can help manage the infrastructure of even the largest city. Smart cities in the future will take this low power, inexpensive, small technology and basically distribute it everywhere. These tiny computers record information about their surroundings, information they can send to other computers or to you. So it's got to, to have come then from the environment. Now, we, we know of one case for sure where the, the chemtrail fibers were found and you could maybe put it together. So I knew there was two cases. Oh, I knew there was And also Lily. And yes. Lily, okay. But, but there are chemtrails everywhere all the time. Correct, and they could have other chemicals in it. But one key that what, we're, what I'm calling the smart dust, where, where smart dust is a very, very small particle at nano size that has a specific function. This looks like if you look at certain times of the day and you see dust, but it's not dust. It's like an iridescent glitter, very specifically different than regular household dust. Yeah. And this would be in areas we, where, where... We have seen that. You know, a doctor, what, what, uh, we, I've got one of those 10 million uh, watt uh, spotlights. You go out at night and point it up to the sky. And you can't believe what's floating in the air. I mean, it's, it's really disgusting. Right. And if you're seeing this iridescence, which looks like just like glitter, that is um, an um, engineered dust or smart dust type uh, material versus regular household dust or that does not reflect back. So here comes the conspiracy theory. If, uh, if, if, if Morgellons or Morgellons is related to chemtrails and it's coming out of the spray from airplanes, is there some grand plan to uh, uh, get this stuff into human beings? Well, it, I don't know if it was a plan or anything, but I will say that all of us have been exposed, all animals, all life forms on this planet. Uh, it's just a matter of what our genetic makeup is, what we have been chemically poisoned with uh, as an industry, oh, meaning man. working in industry versus uh, living in certain polluted areas that is allowing this to manifest more rapidly in individuals than ourselves.